everyone. My name is Takoa. I'm back. This is a Unite to Ignite interview. Uh, we're here with Eliza, branding coach on Instagram. Yes, branding coach mastermind. I saw that in the PDF. I was like, oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah. We're going to go a little bit into your background story just to kind of dive into who you are as a person, build some relationship trust with the, uh, the community. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm currently a branding coach. I actually, I got into branding kind of a little roundabout way. I initially wanted to be a health coach and I did a health coaching program and I was trying to get clients and build that business and I was getting no clients and I was getting a lot of people sliding into my DMs wanting to know how I edited my photos, like what presets <laughs> I used and how I had a pretty feed and stuff like that. And I just started thinking about it more like maybe this is a sign um, yeah. and I helped a friend who's an online entrepreneur with her Instagram and we really made it look a lot better and oh. I debated for a few months and then was like I think I should just do this this it feels so much more aligned um, and I've been working actually as an editor in Hollywood for several years at that point so it was definitely something I was an expert in um, so yeah I made the switch and it was super scary but it feels so much more clear with what I'm doing now it feels right. Yeah, I always tell people, what does everyone else say about you? If people are like, I don't know what to do. I'm like, well, what does everyone else say you're good at? So that's yeah. really good that you kind of picked up on that. Like, you know what? Maybe I should go into business and do this for myself. Mm -hmm. So how is editing in Hollywood? Um, it's very hurry up and wait. And it's very jumping from gig to gig. I was lucky to have a, like, a long-standing gig that I did for about a year and a half. Um, so that was good to have like consistent income with that, but anything yeah. supplemental was very um, unpredictable. So is it, are you a contracted employee or is it you have to go out and find gigs and do it that way? Um, so yeah, like I had a long standing contracted gig with a production company, but then anything else was just kind of searching on Craigslist and Facebook groups. Oh, trying to yeah, trying to sell yourself. So give us a little bit. Let's go farther back. So um, where did you grow up? So I was born in Washington, D.C. And That's then we moved. Oh, cool. Yeah. And then we moved to Delaware when I was about seven. But we also spent a lot of time in England. Um, my dad was from England. He just passed away, actually. But he was from England. And um, I have dual citizenship. So we spent a lot of time there with his family um, growing up. Awesome. So I'm so sorry about your dad passing away. Um, thank you. Yeah, I know we're really close to our parents, and to lose a parent is really hard. Do you see yourself yeah. going back to England as much now? Yeah, I do. I mean, having the citizenship makes it so easy. Um, I mean, it's unfortunate with Brexit, you know, now it's harder. Like, I used to be able to go to any country in Europe. And, well, we don't have to get into that, but <laughs> I have my own thoughts about Brexit. Um, but yeah, at least I still have British citizenship, and um, it just, you know, makes it so easy to go there. I can work there if I wanted to, yeah. um, I'm a full citizen. So yeah, I, I love England. I love the people there, and I like the food. I know people like to hate on British food, but, you know, I grew up with it, so I like it. And, yeah. yeah I'm really at home there. That's one of my goals for next year, is to just travel, travel, travel. So I'll definitely have to connect with you and find out where to go, what are the good places I need to see, everything. Yeah. All right, so how was it growing up and traveling back and forth? How was it? Um, it was it was really fun. I feel like, um, you know, I think exposing kids to travel is so important. I think not enough people, what am I trying to say? Not enough people like get out of the country and you know, experience other cultures firsthand. Um, so I'm really grateful that my parents made that really a priority um, for me growing up. And just, you know, also not just getting to visit another place as a tourist, but actually live there. Because we lived in England for long stretches at a time and you really just get really immersed in the culture. Yeah. yeah is really there a big difference from there to America? Is there like a clear, like this is different? <laughs> yeah, there is. Um, people in England, uh, it's more of a, a how to put it it's not unfriendly but it's not as overtly friendly as people are like people in Europe think of Americans as weirdly smiley um like in Europe if you go into a store or you pass someone on the street people don't smile at you like people in the store aren't going to come up and be like oh can I help you find anything what, what are you looking for today like they'll help you if you ask for it but they're they're more um 
standoffish? A little bit, yeah. Not in a bad way. It's just a different, um, it's just a different way of interacting. But yeah, if you walk around in England, like smiling at everyone you pass, it would be seen as like if people like pull their kids closer. Oh my gosh, I will be a total weirdo. <laughs> super smiley? Yeah, I am. I love super smiley and I love to like engage with people. Um, I definitely respect like privacy bubbles. Like I give people their space, but I'm really smiley. I love to start conversations. So they would probably be like, what? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good to know. Walk around and be like, hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Try yeah. to hold it in. All right, thank you for that, that background. So you grew up all over here and then overseas in England. Um, did you go to school for design or anything? No, I actually wanted to be a doctor. Um, so I was pre-med uh, in college. I went to GW in DC and really wanted to go into either medicine or optometry. I was kind of bouncing between a few different healthcare fields um, and then I just sort of had an epiphany when I was, I guess, I think I was 24, 25, and I dropped everything and bought a one-way ticket to LA and decided to... Wow, buy your dream. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's magnificent. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a Hollywood movie right there. <laughs> yeah, it, it was pretty, it was pretty intense. It was a, a hard transition, but I'm glad that I did it. Did you leave, like, family and everything and just go on your own? Yeah, I have one cousin here, one cousin who lived uh, in Culver City, but besides that, I have no family, I had no friends here, no connections. Wow, like, yes. Just, like, friends of friends kind of people, but yeah, no one else. Um, Such a big leap. Yeah. I'm proud of you. It takes a lot of faith, a lot of courage to do that. A lot of people, they don't, they'll sit on their dream forever, but you were like, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I knew, like... I'm very much a fan of um, that whole concept of like the time will never be right kind of thinking because so many people, they put off what they want to do because, oh, it's the time's not right and yeah. they never do it because it's never going to be right. Any never. major decision, it's never, like whether it's starting a business, moving to a new place, it's never going to be like... Perfect. Never. No. no. Never. Yeah. <laughs> and then sometimes we might think it's perfect and it's disaster. So yeah. you might as well just do it. Just yeah. yeah. All right. So, what made you want to be a doctor? How did you go from being a, wanting to be a doctor into Hollywood? Like such a big transition. Yeah. So I had been pre med for pretty much all of college, um, and then a the couple years after I graduated, I was still taking more science classes and working as an ophthalmic technician, trying to beef up my application for um, med school and optometry school. And, and I took the OCAT as well, and I was studying for the MCAT. And then overnight, I started posting videos on Musical.ly, which is now known as TikTok. It, that's like the old name of the TikTok app yeah, I um, before they, they like rebranded. And I started posting on there because I was seeing a therapist at the time because I was really depressed. I was a super depressed pre-med. And he was like, I think you should you know, take some acting classes or do something creative. He was like, all you're doing is going to work and then going home and studying and that's, you don't do anything else. And I really, I was kind of offended at first. I was like, God damn it, I'm a scientist. I don't have time for acting and creative, you know, frou-frou. Um, but then I thought about it more and I didn't have time or money for acting classes or anything. So I was like, maybe I'll just start posting on Vine and Musical.ly and just see what happens um, and just like have fun with it. And I actually had my accounts private at first because I didn't want anyone to see them. It was just a creative outlet. Right. Um, but a lot of my friends thought that my videos were funny and they were like, you really got to make this public and let other people see these. So I did. And on Musical.ly, I kind of blew up overnight a few years ago yeah. and got a lot of followers and then got some opportunities and some brands reaching out. And I saw this potential other avenue because all I knew at that point was science. That was all I'd really ever yeah. focused on. And I felt like there's no way I can switch to something else now. I mean, even though I was like, 22. <laughs> I was like, my life is over. It's complete. <laughs> but um, I suddenly had this other opportunity and I was like, maybe I could really make something of this. So that was kind of what got me thinking about creative avenues and realizing like, I mean, I'm obviously good at this. I mean, I got all these followers. So yeah. Wow. So it kind of just happened overnight. <laughs> yeah. It was a video of me lip syncing to Nightmare Before Christmas. And 
a lot of people liked it and it got a lot of views and I, I got like 10,000 followers in a week and then it just went from there so wow that's crazy yeah. <laughs> and then you ended up going to Hollywood yeah wow that is that is an amazing story <laughs> yeah 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 literally the walk of fame like the walk of stars is three blocks that way oh you're in hollywood hollywood like you're yeah you're in hollywood <laughs> yeah yeah which is surprisingly one of the cheapest places to live in la a lot of people really? are like oh, hollywood fancy and i'm like no i live here because the rent is so low yeah I, I would not i wouldn't even believe that that's so weird there it's i don't I don't know, but it is a lot of the buildings are really old here. Like my building is over, I think it's over a hundred years old. Wow. Um, I think that's part of it is like, you know, like I don't have air conditioning. I don't have heat. Like, <laughs> oh, so it's, it's like, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they don't have like, like you would think they would put like higher living, you know, apartments down there or something of that nature. There's some. Um, yeah, there are some nicer buildings, but a lot of, there are a lot of older buildings here that are really affordable, so I think that's why. Okay. Wow. Well, best of luck to you on your Hollywood journey. Thanks. Are you looking to, uh, to get into acting or anything? No, um, that was, I always liked being behind the camera more. I mean, I like doing stuff like this, like YouTube videos and, and whatnot, but, um, I have a lot of friends who've gone after acting and that is not the lifestyle for me okay no. <laughs> yeah that's where you draw the line you have yeah. to have boundaries you have to you have to know who you are and where you want to go so you don't get mixed in with you know things that don't appeal to you yeah definitely all right so that's that's a good background story wow <laughs> we don't get too many of those um so let's go straight into you being an instagram mastermind what does that detail? Give us the ins and outs of what it takes to be an Instagram mastermind. Yeah, so do you mean like what I do with my, like my mastermind program for yeah. students? Yeah, so basically I teach my clients how to have really professional looking Instagram feeds from a visual standpoint. So I'd help a little bit with copy, like the bio and captions and stuff like that, but the focus of my program is really on the aesthetics of Instagram. So having a pretty feed, like the simplest way of putting it. Because um, a lot of people, they have great ideas, they have an amazing program and an amazing message that they want to share, but they don't know how to portray it effectively and their content just doesn't look captivating. And if it doesn't look captivating, it, people aren't gonna, you know, linger on your profile. And it, it looks, I feel like saying it looks unprofessional is kind of harsh, but I mean, it's true. Like, an, like um, what's the word, a comparison that I often make is like, if you move to a new place and you're trying to find uh, a new salon to go to and you're Googling local salons and you click on one, even if they have good reviews, if their website looks really bad, if like the text is going off the screen and their logo is pixelated and the photos are blurry, you're probably gonna move on to the next one because it just yeah. doesn't look like they put a lot of effort in. And mm -hmm. they, it could be amazing, but you're probably gonna move on rather quickly. And yeah. it's the same thing with Instagram. If people come to your page and photos are dark, or like they're too dark or they're overexposed or they just don't flow well or you know, people aren't gonna linger. So I really help my students take better photos, learn how to edit them, learn how to make them look cohesive, like come up with a color aesthetic that they want to go with um, and really just tie the whole thing together visually. Awesome. I feel like that's really important because people, you know, we, we see things first, unfortunately, you know, before, before we get to know somebody, we see them first and then we decide, do I want to get to know them or do I want to stray away kind of. Yeah. So I think it's really important to have a cohesive thing going on with your feed, especially if you want to get into Instagram and use it um, for business. It's definitely important. What are some of the key things you learned going through? Yeah, so the key points in my program are first and foremost choosing an aesthetic because there are tons of different ones. There's turquoise and orange, there's brown feeds, there's white feeds, there's dark feeds, there's light feeds, warm, cool, all different color schemes that you can go with. Oh. And I first like help my students choose one because um, you have to choose one and stick to it. You can't be bouncing around or it's not going to look cohesive. So I have them choose one and I have a few different um, methods that I use to help them choose one that not only look good, but they're going to be able to keep up with long term because that's a big problem is someone's like, oh, I'm going to do a uh, pastel and have a cotton candy feed, uh, but they live in a cabin in the woods and there's no pastel oh. in there. <laughs> and they run out of ideas. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, they have like one pastel sweater and they wear that in a photo and then they're like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do now. So you have to come up with a feed that you're going to be able to feasibly do for the long term. You don't have to keep the same feed forever, but I usually recommend not changing it more than about once every six months or so because you want it to look consistent for several scrolls. So, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's kind of the foundation is choosing the aesthetic and then teaching them how to get content for that particular aesthetic, um, how to make the presets, how to cut down their editing time. I have a lot of students who come to me and they're spending like 30 minutes to an hour per photo just editing oh, and I can get yeah. them down to like under five minutes. Um, yeah. which saves them so much time in the long run. I love presets. Like if I find a good photo and I edit it well, I'm like, save that. Because the next one, I'm just throwing through that preset and it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, having one preset or like not just one preset, but having like a little bundle of presets that you like um, is so, it's so helpful and it really, it saves you so much time. Yeah, so what do you recommend for going through the photo editing process? Do you have like the go-tos? What do you use? Yeah, so my two favorite apps personally for my feed, I have a very uh, neutral feed. I used to have like a light and airy feed and I'm actually switching it over to kind of a darker themed feed just for fun because I've had the same one for a long time and I'm switching it up, but it's very neutral. And so for me, my two favorite apps are Visco and Kunicam. Um, not a lot of people have heard of Kunicam. It's one of the lesser known ones, whereas most people know about Visco. Um, but Kunicam is a vintage editing app. So it has a lot of vintage looking presets that are actually inspired by old cameras. Like you can scroll through different old camera types and it'll apply filters that look like that. And it also is a filter, or sorry, an app that lets you add dust and scratches. So when you see people that have like the grainy look on their photos, a lot of them are using that app. And same thing with the light leaks. Like if you see photos that have like a streak of red across them or something, they're usually using Cooney Cam to achieve that look. So, um, and it has a massive preset library as well, like about the same, maybe not as big as Visco, but almost. It's really, really big. So, a lot of options. I tried to use Visco. I could not. I like, I, it was almost like an Instagram feed because the way you can put pictures up. So, mm -hmm. I, I definitely tried to use it and I was like, oh my gosh, it was overwhelming. <laughs> so, maybe yeah. even doing like a Visco course or something like that could be beneficial. Yeah, I've been thinking about making mini courses that just focus on particular apps. Um, if people don't want to do like my whole program, but they just want to learn one thing. So I, I'm, that might be coming in the future. Yeah, I think that'll be great. Because I know for me, I was like, what is going on with this app? I ended up using Lightroom. I use Lightroom, Facetune, and some other things like that. But I just could not figure out this scope for the life of me. So that's definitely a market that needs attending to. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny how some people really take to one app versus another. I teach five in my program as of right now, like my one-on-one -on -one course. Um, and I have some students who love Lightroom and hate Visco and then the other way around. I have one app that I teach called Rainbow Love, which is a very weirdly laid out app. I love it, but it's very difficult to navigate. But I have some students who just take to it and love it. And then some who are like, I'm never using this app ever again after this course. Wow. Um, so it's interesting how some of it's just kind of like in, down to the individual. I'm sure, I'm sure they could find a way to see, like, people who prefer Lightroom are like this, like, maybe it's like a personality thing. That you kind of Probably, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> people who like this, you know, like, because some people like Facebook, but some people like Instagram more, so mm -hmm. why, why is there that difference? Yeah. Um, all right, so, so far with helping people with Instagram, how does that, how does that make you feel? Like, do you feel fulfilled afterwards? Is this like, this is great. I love doing this. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like the texts that I get from my, my happy clients, um, who are really excited about seeing their brand really transform before their eyes. It's so rewarding. Um, I mean, I get texts from clients saying like, I was out today and I saw like a mural or something and it fit my color scheme. And now I have a good place where I'm going to go get some Instagram photos and, um, they'll start to like, my goal for them is for them to be able to see a location or see something right away and know if it fits their feed immediately. Um, because that really just makes creating content so much easier versus when you're out and you're like, oh, I really, I don't know where to take a photo. Um, so I really want them to be able to see the world and know instantaneously, like, is this going to work for my feed and for my brand as a whole? Um, and when they have the, those realizations, it's like, it's, it's so amazing. rewarding. To, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's good. From going to be a scientist to helping people with Instagram, such a huge transition. But the great thing about it is you're still helping people. 
So that's really good. To take a step back, why did you choose optometry? Um, I think because I've always liked science a lot, um, but my best subject in science was always physics by a long shot. Um, chemistry, eh, 50-50, but bio I really struggled with. Um, and optometry is very physics heavy. So it was, you know, just going to be easier. Like in college, um, I mean, yeah, bio was such a struggle. Chemistry was, um, was difficult, but passable. But physics, you know, I was just like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, easy day for me. <laughs> Do you see yourself maybe going back into that or is it the creative world from here on out? I think it's the creative world from here on out. I kind of said when I moved to LA that I was going to give myself like three or four years to really see if I wanted to do this or if I wanted to instead go back. Because the courses that I took in college, I think they're they're like good for 10 years if you want to use them yeah. towards applying to schools and stuff. Um, so I was going to give myself a few years here. And now that I've really settled in on a set path of what I want to do, um, I think I'm, I'm definitely going to stick with this. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. It's probably just like a, a weight is lifted. <laughs> kind yeah. of just being out in the world and being free and kind of, you know, making your own path. Yeah. Yeah, and like going back to having a boss would be so hard now. <laughs> it sucks so much. It sucks so much. Yeah, I left my job probably probably over five years ago, and I haven't been back since. I'm like, I could not go back to a nine to five. Yeah, not in the typical corporate America realm anyway. I like being free. <laughs> yeah, same. It's such a it's such a difference working for yourself. I mean, it has its own like problems for sure. Like being self-motivated is a whole ball game of its own, but overall it's yeah. so rewarding and I don't think I could go back now. Awesome. So with your Instagram clients, who do you, who do you appeal to? Is it the Instagram models? Is it people that are leaving their 95 and trying to start their own business on Instagram? What's your ideal market? Yeah, so I actually decided to focus in on health coaches, um, partially just because I like the work that they do. I mean, I was interested in doing that too. Also, my health background. Um, actually, funny, so like I wanted to go into optometry. The mystery behind me is actually an eyeball. Oh, wow. Oh, oh you're serious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like an homage to my old passion. Um, yeah, it's a drawing of an eyeball from like an old Victorian textbook. So it's not actually super accurate there's parts of it that are not not in line with what we know today but it's it's pretty cool. but it was the start it's what got yeah. us to where we are now <laughs> yeah here we are um but yeah healthcare was such a big part of my life for so long and so focusing on health coaches and also other types of wellness coaches like you know fitness coaches and stuff like that um really appealed to me and also because i did go through a health coaching program i really know what those types of people are looking for i know like how they run their businesses i know what they're trying to do with their business so it's easier for me to appeal to them but i've worked with people in a multitude of different fields i've worked with influencers i've worked with people in finance i've worked with people in um like direct marketing like people who sell tangible products um so all different kinds of services but i focus on uh, health coaching primarily that's cool because you did say that you you went to a health coach like class certification mm -hmm. program yeah i did iin which is a year-long program um, the Institute of Integrative Nutrition. Okay, so do you still put health into what you do? Could you see yourself maybe being a consultation or doing consult consultations for health or something like that? Or is that just on the back burner, just knowledge that you have that you use to help other coaches? Yeah, it's just on the back burner. I thought for a while about trying to combine the two, but I know how important niching down is. Like, you really don't want to be a general store when you're a coach and, like, try to appeal to everybody. Obviously, if you're Walmart, you can get away with that because you're Walmart, but yeah. um, if you're not, it's very hard to be a general store and just appeal to the masses. You really want to hone in on one type of person and hone in on one type of thing that you do. And I'm really good at spreading myself too thin, trying to please everyone, so... I'm just going to stick to this for right now. All right. Awesome. I think that's great. Um, so what are you looking for in Hollywood? So when people watch this video, they know to call you for this. What is it that you want? The opportunity you're looking for? 
yeah, so I'm really just looking for the opportunities to keep sharing the work that I do. I love doing things like this. I love doing um, speaking engagements for masterminds. Like I've been brought in as a guest speaker for some online masterminds, or um, I have an upcoming podcast interview um, that I'm going to be doing. And yeah, just um, things like that, just really spreading the work that I do and, and talking to people about how to really improve their presence online visually. Awesome. I think your, your story of kind of finding yourself to where you are now is awesome. It's really inspiring. So that might be something you look into just sharing with the world too. Like since you're from, from there to here, your story is very inspiring. Kind of just following your own path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'd love to also encourage people, you know, if they're feeling like they can't make that leap and move to the other place or leave their job or, or something like that to make them feel like, you know, you can and, and it will fall into place. You might have some kitchen floor meltdowns along the way, but <laughs> we'll make it. <laughs> yes, yes, the meltdowns do happen, but the point is to, to not stay down for so long, but to get back up and keep moving towards your dream. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just It's just one foot in front of the other sometimes. And like, I feel like as long as you're making some steps even if they're baby steps it's all like you know when i have the days where i'm just really not motivated and all i do that's productive that day is do like a live stream on instagram and post a photo and i'll feel like wow i've got barely anything done it's like at least i did something at least i did a tiny step forward and i try to just focus on that yeah that's smart a lot of us we think we're not doing enough all the time but we don't see the little things that we're doing that'll add up to the big picture yeah exactly yeah so you gotta stay positive all right so what's next for you um what are you doing now what's going on in business yeah so um i'm gonna be relaunching my one-on-one -on -one program um probably within the next four weeks i'm gonna start launching that um i also recently created a mini course just on how to make highlight covers those little cute little icons that you can use um, to cover your highlights and make them look really cohesive. And I want to also create a few more mini courses that I'm just going to have as like passive income products as well. I'm not sure exactly what the topics are going to be, but I'm thinking something about story aesthetics because I get asked a lot like how I make my stories look cute too. Um, even though they're not as important as the feed because they don't tie into that initial like, um, I don't want to say judgment that sounds bad, but they don't tie into that initial. It is though. It yeah, is. I guess it is. <laughs> yeah, like when people first come to your feed and they're like, "Do I want to follow this person or not?" Yeah, stories don't tie into that, but they are still part of your whole brand. So I'm thinking about making a course all about stories and maybe combining that with my highlight covers course and making it just a big, a big, a big mini course, I guess. So okay. I don't forget about Visco. I think that should definitely be it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I do want to make some courses on that. The only issue with that is that they update the apps a lot, so I feel like I'd have to be like nice. remaking the course often because yeah. already since I made I made some tutorials for my one-on-one -on -one program, and since then two of the apps have already like changed their layout, and I had to remake the entire tutorial. So that would be like, like yeah, that's that's a consistent growth thing. Then maybe I yeah, focus on the things that we know aren't going to change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, where can everyone follow you? Yeah, so I am on Instagram at Eliza Coconut, um, E L I Z A, and then coconut, like the, are they fruits or seeds? I actually don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> a fruit? I know it's not a nut, is it? <laughs> I don't know, whatever they are, but spelled, spelled the normal way. So yeah, Instagram is just at Eliza Coconut. And then you can also find me on TikTok at my, my real name. My last name is not really Coconut. Um, my last name is Cause. So my TikTok is at Eliza Cause, which is uh, C-A-W-S. And then my YouTube channel is also Eliza Cause. All right, awesome. Yeah. So um, let me see, write it down. And definitely send it to me so I can put it in the description down below so everyone can follow you as well, especially if they need help on Instagram. Yeah. No need to be lost when you someone can help get you together. Yeah. And then before we go, since I'm going to put this on my channel as well, do you mind introducing yourself and like talking a little about your programs in case my followers are interested? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I am Tacoa. Everyone calls me Coco. Um, I run Unite to Ignite. I run a life coaching 
mindset program where I help people get their mind in order. If you're feeling lost, if you don't feel fulfilled in your nine to five in your daily life or even at home with your husband, your kid, your wife, you just don't feel fulfilled. You don't feel like you're your best self. I help you get to your best self. So I like to take people from dreaming of who they could be to achieving who they want to be in a short time. So I go through my four step program is changing your mindset. Um, what are you saying to yourself? What could you be doing better? Who do you believe that you are versus who you want to be? And then the second one is dealing with those bad habits we have. The person who's like, oh, I want to be an actress or I want to be a finance coach. But when I ask, what do you do when you come home? I watch Netflix because I'm on season eight of whatever. It's like, all right, well, let's try to get away from the consistency of doing nothing and get you into doing something that'll help bring about that vision that you see. So that's the bad habits part. Then we go into making time to grow, which is anything you want to do, you have to be purposeful. So if you want to be an Instagram, you know, brand help, then you need to be on Instagram looking up new ways to develop stories, how to get the feed to look nice. You need to make yourself an authority in that realm by educating yourself. So that's the next step. And then the last step is after you got your mind right, broke your bad habits, you learned about what you want to do and where you want to go, you go there. You just do everything in your power to get yourself where you see yourself at by actually executing. So that's the last step. That's my four-step program that I take people to. Um, my YouTube channel, Unite to Ignite, it has motivational content, but it also, uh, I meet up with different people and I interview them to show them the differences in all of us but the similarities as well. So people will say, oh my gosh, I you know, had a dream and I'm in science school, but I don't wanna be there anymore. Maybe I too can follow my dream of going somewhere different and doing something different and it's not gonna be the end of the world. And they learn that through seeing people like Eliza. So that's the, um, that's the YouTube channel content. So you can follow me on IG at Unite to Ignite Facebook, Unite to Ignite, Twitter, Unite to Ignite, and Instagram, I mean, and YouTube at Unite to Ignite. It's U-N-I-T-E-T-O-I-G-N-I-T-E. -I -I -E. Awesome. I'll put all that down in the description of my video as awesome. well. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. It looks like we're reaching about our 30-minute mark. I don't like to keep the videos too long. I know people have things to do, and we're all busy people, so I keep them short and sweet, but we got to a lot of good information. I think your story is remarkable. <laughs> I also think that traveling to um, to England part and being dual citizen, that's great. You know, you still have the option to, well, not right now, but <laughs> not as much, right? But you still have the option to go. So that's really cool. Um, and I think going from being in science, you know, going for this, this, I would assume a doctorate, um, plan. Yeah. I didn't, I don't have yeah. a doctorate, but that was the plan. Yeah. But I, I, I see like changing that for essentially your happiness and freedom is, is just really remarkable. So I think that's such a great transition to say, this is what I want to do. And it kind of, you didn't even know, you know, kind of just pulled you. Yeah. It kind of just happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. I mean, I, I went from what is one of the probably most stable and secure job fields out there. I mean, healthcare is like the one place where you're practically never going to be unemployed. You're practically never going to be broke. I mean, obviously there are exceptions, but in general, and I went to probably like one of the least secure, least financially reliable <laughs> industries possible. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't say it like that because it seems crazy, <laughs> but it's, you have to take that leap of faith, you know, because if you don't, somebody else will and you'll look at them and you'll say that could have been me that's what I wanted to do and now here they are just living their life to the best and you're kind of stuck in this cycle of you know a nine to five or whatever the case may be and that doesn't genuinely make you happy so I think the leap is great I think it's remarkable and I'm going to continuously say that forever <laughs> I definitely support it and I appreciate the help with the Instagram so if you didn't know um, before that you need to have a clear aesthetic when you're doing Instagram, you need to have a theme, 
you need to appeal to people in a certain way because the first thing they see when they come on your page besides your profile picture and your bio is your feed. That's what gets people to stay around. So that's why it's so important. So if you need help with that, then definitely feel free to reach out to Eliza and get that in your favor. All right. And I always ask people, I kind of just throw this out there to you. If there was anything in the world that you can tell, you know, everybody who's going to watch this video, what would it be? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I think what I would tell people is I would just repeat my favorite quote, um, which is, I'd rather regret the things I've done than regret the things I haven't done. Aww, that's a tearjerker. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful. Okay, yep. So regret the things that you've done rather than the things you haven't done. That means get up and get to it, everybody. All right, and I will see you all on the next interview. Have a great one.